We don't often associate amphibians with the desert, but here in Arizona, there are a few spectacular species that manage to cling to survival in this harsh and arid landscape. The species that we're searching for tonight possesses a unique defensive mechanism. This toad is armed with psychotropic drugs. My name is Benzino, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. In order to find any amphibians in the desert, you must first find water, either standing water, which is incredibly rare, or actual rain, which is what we were really counting on to get amphibians moving. Look at this little pancake in the wash right here. Are you gonna let me pick you up? Yep. Check this out, what the heck? It's a horned lizard. How cool is this? Let me get him in a filming position. <laughs> this has got to be one of the absolute cutest animals out here in the desert. This is the regal horned lizard. Now, when I was a kid, I feel like I remember learning about these as horny toads, but they're not that. They're not toads, they're not amphibians. These are, in fact, reptiles, despite the fact that he has a very unique morphology. And actually, a lot of the unique characteristics of this animal are anti-predatory. One of the things they're very famous for is the ability to actually squirt blood out of their eyes at a potential predator. And if that doesn't scare the predator away, they'll do what it's doing now, which is flatten out those ribs and then normally inflate with air. Now, I know that doesn't sound like it would be a very effective anti-predatory technique, but one of the main predators of our horned lizards are snakes. Lots of snakes out here are, in fact, lizard specialists, but if these lizards can puff up enough that these snakes can no longer gape wide enough to actually eat them, then it's game over for the snakes. And there are actually lots of accounts of especially younger snakes dying because they try and eat these things. And these horns, which are actually carotenized scales, on the nape of the neck here will penetrate through the snake's esophagus when these lizards inflate. Now, horned lizards have an interesting ecological niche as well because they're actually ant specialists. And Spencer was actually just telling me that one thing that these lizards are struggling with is the replacement of native harvester ants by invasive fire ants. So as that replacement happens, these are losing their native food source, which they have evolved to consume and live off of. The first few days of this trip were pretty dry, and we had literally not seen a single amphibian. And then we saw rain clouds in the distance. You wanna hop into my hand here? That's fine. <laughs> oh, there he goes. No, 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 not too far. Into my hand. Look at this. Look at this cutie. This is the couch's spade foot toad. All of our spade foot toads are unique because they are highly fossorial compared to most other toads. And to dig their burrows, they actually have a carotenized spur on their back feet. Now here in the desert, couches spade foots, their movement is pretty much entirely dependent on the rainy season. So during these rare rain events, the males like this one are going to be emerging from their burrows. They're going to be seeking pools of water where they will then call for female spade foots to lay their eggs. And they have a very narrow window of rainy season when this is possible. And so it's very important that they're able to cross these roads successfully, make it to those breeding sites and produce the next generation of spade foots. Now, one more unique thing about spade foots is that if we look at the eye here you can see they actually have vertical pupils which is very different than the round pupils we see on almost all of our other toads and the reason they have these vertical pupils is going to give them incredible depth perception and it's going to allow them to really open up that pupil and let in more light at night since they are pretty much strictly nocturnal i'm going to put this guy down over here safely off the road and let's go see if we can find a truly giant amphibian Okay, we have a huge toad. Hold on, this thing is massive. It's under a thorn bush. I've got to catch this thing. This is such a cool animal. Mm, how am I going to do this? Human brain versus toad brain. Who's going to win? Go to the trail. To the trail. Yes. Ouch. Ow, cactus. God. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Nice catch. Ow. Oof. Spines. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> Check this out. This is the largest toad native to North America. This is the Sonoran Desert Toad. Look how big this thing is, holy cow. That is enormous. As the largest toads in North America and in the Sonoran Desert, sometimes weighing over a pound and being up to eight inches long, which honestly, that's like basically the animal. This is a huge one. These are apex predators of the amphibian world. So 
anything that fits in this mouth, they are going to consume. They have some crazy stomach acids that will dissolve everything. So you can find these guys eating scorpions, eating tarantulas, eating smaller frogs and toads. There's even some accounts of these eating small snakes, which is really sad, but it is part of the cycle of life. Another thing that is crazy about these toads, other than their desert lifestyle and enormous size, is they actually produce DMT, a psychotropic drug, in their parotoid glands. And there's other glands located all along the side of this toad that are continually pumping out these extremely potent toxins. This 5-methoxy dimethyltryptamine is produced alongside of powerful bufotenins and cardiac glycosides, which are actually strong enough to stop a human heart if consumed in large enough quantities. However, this has not stopped people from attempting to take advantage of this toad's unique chemical properties, often through either licking the toad or collecting and crystallizing its secretions. There is a long list of potential effects that can be induced by ingesting the DMT that is produced by these toads, including sensations such as euphoria and powerful hallucinations. Now, because DMT is categorized as a Schedule I controlled substance in the U.S., licking these toads or collecting their secretions is strictly illegal. And yes, you can look it up, people have actually been arrested for licking the drug toads. These toads are so popular for their recreational value, in fact, that many states have decided to list the species as threatened, both to combat the threat of overcollection for recreational use and because road mortality is a significant problem for the species. This has been such a crazy animal encounter. That is such a huge amphibian. I'll go ahead and get some B-roll shots and then we will set it right back down. But wow, that is totally wild. This is the cost of the drug toad, dude. You want a drug toad? You have to get spined by a cactus. I am leaking DMT off my hand while extracting cactus spines. Here is your sneak peek at the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, Stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.